Hey guys, welcome back to the 30th episode of Let's Play Space Engineers as a German Engineer. The last episode we had to abruptly end because it was getting so long that I couldn't warrant putting it all in one video. If you haven't seen episode 29, I'll put a little link up here in the top right corner of this video that you can click on to go and watch it. In the last video, we were trying to build our 3D printer and we were struggling with the rotor wheel solution that we had kind of come up with. Um, it was slipping a lot in our uh, survival world. And so I decided to go back into the creative world to figure out how to fix it and what we could do. So that's where we're starting right here. Let's get to it. So, <laughs> Here's the deal. This works perfectly fine in creative. Um, now, I don't think the difference is between survival and creative. I think the difference is this is a single player world and the other one is a multiplayer world, which is probably spinning up like a, a network server, um, whereas this here is like all local. The reason why the other world is a multiplayer world is so I can connect my spectator to the world. But as you can see, this will dock and this will roll up smoothly, no problemo, no skidding, no nothing. So I think what that means for me is I will have to do the piston fix. Um, I'll probably try it in creative first. I mean, I, 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 since... Since nothing is broken in creative, uh, I can't tell if it will actually fix anything either. But I can at least make sure that I figure out the... And it's just nice and smooth. <laughs> um, I can make sure to figure out that it actually works and that I get the mechanics of it right. Um, so let me, let, me, let me mess around with that for a little bit and then get back to you. Okay. It's been a while. It's actually the next day. I've spent so many hours trying to figure this out. I thought... I thought at least the uh, kind of piston support approach would be straightforward and easy, but oh man, I was so wrong. But I figured it out. So before we go back into the survival world and actually build what I've came, come up with, I wanted to share with you a couple of things that I've learned in this process. Um, because I think it's... Uh, a lot of these things were not clear to me, uh, and I spent a lot of time trying to figure them out. And once I did, it was actually really, really helpful. So <clears throat> I've set up a couple of uh, experiments here. And on the first one, the goal here is to align these merge blocks using this piston. And you would assume that, oh, it's a piston, right? It's We know it's two blocks high, right? So we can just put a merge block on to the top of the piston and a merge block over here lower the piston all the way down, and then they can merge. No problem, right? Well, it's not quite that easy, sadly. Um, we pull this piston all the way down. We may have to fly up a little bit. You will see that when this piston is all the way down, this merge, these two merge blocks are not perfectly aligned. That if you try to actually merge them now, they will not. So, a piston fully retracted is actually not going to work in this situation. And something similar is true for the piston all the way up. So we all know a piston can extend 10 meters, so that's four blocks, right? One, two, three, four. So, it should perfectly align with this merge block here once it's fully extended, right? It turns out it's not. In this case, I believe they will merge. Yeah, uh, but it will push down the piston. Have you seen that? Like, let me let me repeat that. See how the, the the piston and the merge block they jump around a little bit. And if you have stuff attached here, that's that's not something we want to have happen. That that'll 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 be causing clang and breaking blocks and and tearing apart subgrids. So no bueno. Let's look at this here over here. The only change that I've made here is I... So there's no way for this piston to connect to this merge block. So I lift the merge block up a little bit. Um, and then I've set two, a max and a minimum distance on this, um, on this piston. So when we come down... Aha. Uh -huh. 
That looks very good. I want to turn it on? No problem. Merge this immediately. Let's extend it. Perfectly aligned. And we turn it on. No jumping around. It moves just a little bit, but it, on it doesn't move up and down. It just moves a little bit left and right, just a titsy tiny bit. So what I did here, as I mentioned, I've set a max and minimum distance. Specifically, I'm going to share these values with you. The maximum distance is 9.84. This will cause a fully extended piston, and with fully I mean up to that distance, uh, a block that's attached to it at the top to perfectly align with, with, the, with its neighbors. And on the retract path, the minimum distance is 2.34. Uh, again, a fully retracted piston. Will perfectly align with its neighbors at, at those values. Okay. So we have this. Let's go to the next one. Um, on the actual rig, oh, I, did you see it? Oh, oh. <laughs> on the actual rig, um... This is a. There's no piston here, and I'm. I mean, ultimately there is a piston, but, but uh, this looks a little bit different on the actual rig. But again, the the idea here is, we want to detect. Uh, we want to introduce two stops, right, in the in the in the rig, one at a full block and one at a half block, and originally we we, we didn't care too much where exactly on the blocks we're doing those stops. It was just important that we would be doing them, in half block increments, roughly half block increments. Um, well, for various reasons, we would now want them to be perfectly aligned or as close as possible aligned with the actual block. At a half block, we care a little bit less, but the full block is important, primarily so that the piston can operate and can kind of like climb up on the side um, without having to worry about uh, what the what the wheels and, and the rest of the rig are doing. So I tried to figure out how I could configure a sensor that it would detect um, these chairs, which I ended up using. Um, I, I turned them around uh, for reasons, but uh, wanted them to... Uh, <laughs> it's actually interesting because for reasons is, is a really bad reason, but um, because if I hadn't turned them around, I could have used the sensor like this. But basically, if you have, if you have something, a block that is right around the edge of a block so like this chair here right is right on the on the upper edge of uh, the block in the background let's turn on the hut so you can see my crosshair right right over here using a sensor that is placed like this you can perfectly detect this edge so let me raise this piston let me turn this piston the sensor will stop once it detects, it will stop the piston once it detects something. So this is my half block increment. Uh, this is, let's slow it down. So this will come down here now. And we'd like it to as close as perfectly align with the red block in the background. But we can see it does not, right? Um, it should go a little bit further down it's 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 still a little bit too high it's not it's not perfectly aligned with the red block it's close but it's if we're now doing merge block shenanigans like again blocks will jump around and um it won't be nice so yeah well you might say well then then reduce the back extent of the sensor right like make this the bottom part of this uh detection box here make it come up a little bit more so the block will go down a little bit more but this is a limitation of sensors and i'm somewhat wondering if the programmers knew what they were doing when they were doing this the back extent is at 0 0.1 and if i try to put it at 0 0.05 for example amount should be between 0 0.1 and 50 we can't go lower than 0 
So if we want to detect something that is perfectly aligned with this edge, a sensor oriented this way will not be able to do this because its front and back extend are limited to not being any lower than 0 0.1. So there will always be a certain amount of overflow here. And in fact, since it's on that sitting on that plane, it'll be exactly 0 0.1. Like, um, what is that? 10 centimeters. This offset here between these two blocks will be exactly 10 centimeters. So if you have your markers on the edge of a block instead of at, in the center, for example, then you cannot use your sensor at the edge of the block as well. So instead, what I did over here, this is the same setup, right? The only difference is that I moved the sensor on this side of the block. So now I can configure an arbitrary amount of offset. Not arbitrary, it's still limited to 0 0.1 and 50, right? But but this, those limitations do not bother me as much anymore. Um, so if I... So this is the half block extent. And you can see it's not perfect, right? Uh, in fact, this is where the 0 0.1 limitation still bites me. Because I would like to this to be a little bit higher in the bottom now. But I can't put it any higher because it, it should be at 0 0.05 approximately. I, I think it's 0... I actually wrote down here somewhere. It's 0. Point, oh no, I, I just wrote down the 0 0.1 approximately. Uh, it's 0 0.04 something. Um, but if we raise it one more... Or actually, let's lower it down. I think that makes more sense. Let me turn it on. So if we lower it down... Now when it stops, look at that. It's perfectly aligned between these two blocks. Or almost perfectly, in fact. It's a little bit too low, but this is going to be sufficient. Keep in mind that these sensors have a limitation of 0 0.1, and that's, that, that's not necessarily news. Um, but depending on what kind of blocks you're using to obstruct these sensors, and depending on where you want to put the sensor and whatnot, um, so it's actually one thing that I learned with these blocks that we have here that are functioning as like ticks, so to say. If we want to raise a block only half block, I don't think that's possible. So you can you can use one sensor to perfectly align a block uh, on either the full block or the half block height, depending on if you're using uh, elements that are at the edge of it, their block or in the center of the block. I don't think you can do both with just one sensor. And I tried. <laughs> That's what all the calculations here in my little notebook are for. Um, to figure out exactly how big this box needs to be so that this block would be aligned both on the full block uh, and the half block. And it's just not possible with one sensor. I actually, this is something I just realized uh, last night. Um, you could use two sensors. Um, like basically, because this sensor can align perfectly, I haven't configured it to do that, but this perfect this sensor could perfectly align on the half block. Um, and this one can perfectly align on the full block. So you could use two sensors to do both. Um, I don't care that much about the half block, uh, that it's not perfect, that it's like off by 0 0.05 or whatever. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't impede the, the functionality of the printer, I believe. Um, so yeah, this is the second thing that I learned the hard way. <laughs> this is uh, just a neat little trick um, that I came up with. I actually didn't end up... Let's uh, quickly... Um, I actually didn't end up using it. Uh, I At some point, I was like, oh, when, when the, I need to know if the wheels are turning or not. <clears throat> like, at the end of... when After the, the piston was finished... Move, um, climbing up one stage, I needed to know if I, the piston should be retracting again or if it needed to stay off. And this was depending on if the wheels were turning or not. And so I came up with this idea of, like, if you... Um, I don't know if you can see this. 
when you look at the wheel, the bounding box of the wheel is actually a square and not a really a circle. Um, so I was like, maybe you can detect the bounding box using a sensor. And so like, if you have the sensor just perfectly aligned with the wheel, it would turn on and off if the wheel was spinning and it would just remain um, on one state, either on or off, if the wheel wasn't spinning. Um, so right now you can see the sensor actually is in detected state. It's blue. It's green if it isn't in detected state. But it's stable. It's not doing anything. Right? Um, so if you want to know if the wheel is spinning, the fact that it doesn't switch state would indicate that it's not spinning. So if we turn it on this block, now you will see that the sensor will switch between being on and being off. Right? I hooked this light to it so that you can have a better visual indicator. Yeah, so it's the the exact values that you need to set this to. Um, in this case, I used... Um, so you, there's two values that you need to think about. There's the height, and then how far it kind of like reaches in. And they need to be um, kind of adjusted with each other. In this case, I've used a 0.2 front end extent, which is basically the height of this detection box. And then a 0.81 uh, left ex uh, right extent, which basically defines how far out this goes. And if you if you configure it just right, uh, you can, when the wheel is spinning, the sensor will turn on and off. And then also, Especially if you have a wheel on a rotor, this wheel is, is a subgrid, so you can just use the subgrid detection of the stations and uh, subgrids are on. So it will detect sub uh, station subgrids, which this wheel is, in this case. Yeah. So, I hope this uh, was insightful. Um, let's take a look at this. I don't want to walk you through everything here in the in the creative world, um, but rest assured, yeah, I've added a support piston, and what that means is basically every three blocks there's a merge block all the way up, and this support piston there's two merge blocks uh, in the support piston. There's one right there, and then there's one at the top, and then this piston will retract. And kind of stabilize this entire rig as these wheels move up. So there's not going to be any slippage that way. Um, and then when the piston is almost fully retracted and almost is based on this piston offset here that we learned about over there, this bottom merge block, the support merge block, will be up here and perfectly aligned with this merge block. And now we'll turn this one on and turn this one off, and then the piston extends again to go up to the next level. And so this piston kind of like climbs up the side of this pillar here, all the way to the top, over time, um, and it's being controlled just like the wheel. So when the wheels spin, this piston will pull up, and when the wheels are fixed, this piston will be stopped. And so this piston will continuously provide support. Um, there, in theory, you could build this entire rig almost without wheels, probably, just using pistons like this. But I wanted to keep it in the in the spirit of the original idea, so I didn't mo remove all the wheels or anything like that. And they do provide some support still. Can I he keep everything in place? Um, and in fact, like, if you're fine with it slipping around, you could remove the piston and it would continue working the exact same way. The piston is uh, purely, like, support it's like how you say incremental enhancement <laughs> you guys want to see it run or should we go into the survival world and build it there immediately you guys want to see it run right okay let's see if this works um let's reverse them so what happened now is when i reversed them they immediately 
uh, probably immediately triggered one of these chairs. Over here. Right, with the sensor. And then turned them off and activated the crossbar. And as you can see, I have already printed something successfully. Almost entirely successfully. A couple pieces are not actually correctly printed here. But that's a problem with the blueprint of the ship, uh, or the ship itself, like how the ship is designed. So now it raised up, did you see that? It raised up a little bit, and there's no slipping. Although there was no slipping without the piston in the creative world either, so... We'll see about that. Um, I want to show you how the piston kind of does its thing, so I'm going to cheat a little here. And deactivate the stop block. I think this should cause it to just uh, skip all these chairs here and fully retract this piston. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> this, uh, all these timer blocks will not get quite complicated and you're easily to say. As you can see, in some places, I've lost some of these wheels uh, while working on this. I uh, did some cloudy things along the way. A lot of... Uh, a lot of failures, I can tell you that. There we go, now it's lifting up, and it should like now lift all the way up until this block and this block are aligned. This will trigger this sensor here on top, which I've, I'm also detecting subgrids with. And then it extends this, turns off this merge block, extends the piston, and this is all what these timer blocks, what they're doing here. And then when it just reaches this one, it's the max extension of the of the piston, it'll turn it back on and turn this one off. And in theory, if I hadn't disabled this timer block here, this thing would resume now. And so it does this all the way up to the top. Let's build it in survival. Okay, we're back in our gloomy survival world. Um... Oh, another thing that I learned, by the way, in the in creative was that uh, these um, blast doors are not gonna get the job done. They are uh, not obstructing the space here up here well enough, and st stuff will get kind of like welded up that shouldn't be. So we need to replace them with other blocks at some point. But I'm not gonna make this uh, a priority right now. Instead, what I want to do is. So the rig is all the way at the top right now. We will want to lower it all the way down. And in fact, we will need... I, uh, I've mentioned this before, in the la uh, earlier, I think. Um, we'll need to have the ability to actually merge it on the bottom as well. So I think I'm going to add some merge blocks for it to merge on the bottom. And then we'll get it all the way down um, so that we can install the other merge blocks and the piston and install all the merge blocks along the the way here. Um, so the way that I want to merge it in the bottom is I think like this and then have so this should be a merge block here and then have this block come out uh, just with the stop blocks that are down there and then put a merge block facing up. So, just come out, and then have a merge block. I don't remember where I have all my blocks here. Facing up, okay. And then up here, this block's gonna be a merge block facing down. So I also will need to replace all these chairs and flip them in orientation, replace the sensor, um, fix the blast doors, uh, and put in merge blocks all the way up. Oh, and I need to raise the ceiling by one block. These all need to be one block higher. That's a, um, just an effect of the, the piston. Okay, so now we're down. We should be able to merge this here safely. Okay. Um, let's put the piston in place. 
And then in the creative world, we had all these timer blocks attached here. I think I would rather have them here in the in the arm instead of being all stacked on top. So we need four in total. So let's make this base four. So we're gonna configure our piston. And then it should stop right where we need to put the merge block. So we'll add some supports here. To be able to put a merge block there, we need to actually lift up the carriage again. So I think what I will do next is I will be putting merge blocks in all the way up every three blocks um, and then I'll get my welding ship to weld them all up and uh, I'll do the same for the chairs over there. Okay, let's see you a couple of minutes. <laughs>
uh, stations and specifically uh, subgrids because it, it's going to be attached to this piston, which will make it a subgrid. The only thing that I haven't done yet, which I will have to do, there's two things actually. I don't have a merge block here. I may not actually need this. Right now I have a merge block down here for when this carriage returns all the way to the bottom. Uh, and I have not automated this yet properly. I need to actually detect when this here attaches because I need to trigger some actions in response to that. I had at least once did I have the problem where this detached up here from the piston. And I think it was related to this block merging here because then this piston is connecting these parts here and these parts down here. So it's like a subgrid to itself, so to say. And that... Not sure if the game likes that. But I I fixed it and then I never had a problem again so far. So, I don't know. Let's... I guess we'll just run it and see what happens. I think... We can just hit the start button. If everything is set up correctly, I should be able to do that. Let's see what happens. So, I hit the start button. And... Nothing happens. <laughs> okay. These merge blocks are both detached. Let's see if this piston velocity is negative, so it should be retracting. And it is on. Um, let's check if we're... Let me detach the uh, merge block up there. I know that this, like, this will probably cause everything to lift up. But that would be... Good. But it does not. Are we still attached somewhere else? So now everything should be detached. But I can still see the welders. So we are probably merged somewhere else. In theory, all of these grids should be... All these merge blocks are inactive. So we shouldn't be merged with the static grid anymore. But when I pull this up, I do see all the welders and the base, so we are still merged somehow. Wouldn't be this merge block, Ryan. Like, merge blocks will not merge when they're inactive? I assume. But maybe they will if they are next to a regular block? Grinding it down to non-functional will not do it for me. Because even a non-functional block is still... will still connect the grids. Is there a way to see um, like if blocks are connected? I don't want to... I don't want to grind it down. Because then I will have to reconfigure all these timer blocks and stuff. I know how to figure it out. I will just put a merge block over here. Oh, I see. So, <laughs> interesting. Okay, I think I learned something again. Yes. Okay, but this will... Yes, okay. So if you put a, a non-merge block next to a merge block, the merge block doesn't care. It'll just... It'll just... Uh, the merge block will just behave like a, like a non-merge block. Okay, so I will have to remove this one. And then replace it everywhere. I'm glad nothing broke because that was kind of sketchy. So I need to get a merge block in here then. I thought I was able to get away with not having to have one there. Um, so I need the merge block right on the height of this piston. So I need to... Put a block down here, and here, and here, and now I can uh, remove this one block in between, here, this one. Not 100% convinced I'll be able to get a new block in there. Okay, that was uh, less dramatic than I thought it would be. There. So now I can remove this again. And now I should be able to put a merge block here. Okay.
So I, I think I should turn off the sensor. Um, as well. Oh, wait a second. Which block is this? Oh, I replaced it. Oh, okay. Uh, lucky I found this. Um, okay. I, I, I want to turn off the sensor because I don't want to double trigger. Um, I'm a little bit concerned it might. Uh, but definitely I need to turn on these blocks here. I think I need to fix some things over here as well. Here, yeah. Large block. Off. Okay, I think... Everything is good. Should be able to start it. We did stop this here. And when I start it, I think it will... Kind of switch the direction without actually switching the direction. So I may have to manually switch direction. I, I need to figure out at some point then... I, uh... I should have a mechanism to kind of like cancel a print, right? Uh, for basically to stop what it's doing, go all the way back, either to the top or to the bottom. Uh, yeah, actually, I should just stop where it is. And then I should be able to hit the reset button to get it all the way down again. Um, but when I, when I, the, the, the thing is, when I cancel it, I don't want this here to be able to actually bounce back further. I want it to complete and then stop. Because right now it'll just send it back again automatically. So I probably when I hit cancel, I need to disable... Uh, I need to think about it. The cancel is a little bit more complicated. But also not super critical. Okay. Let's give it a test. Start. It's not actually stopping. The wheels are stopped, but nothing else is stopping. The piston is certainly not. Let's stop the piston, I guess. So, it seems like the wheel stopped. But the piston didn't. Vertical stop. Toggle the piston on? No. Toggle it off. Wow. Resume. Okay, the retract needs to be on the resume. It should be in that state, but I just want to make sure that I want to make sure that it's in that state because otherwise it will not work correctly. So I'm going to remove the retract from here. Okay, let's try again. Now it's trying to move up. Okay, let's stop because the piston isn't. It should be. Uh, it should be lifting up, but it can't do that while it's running. So this is the stop, right? Yeah. So do trigger now. Okay. So I'll need to uh lower this just one tick here probably. It didn't trigger. Maybe one more. There we go. Yeah. Okay, now it's extending. Let's hope that it locks in here correctly. Yeah. And releases here. Yeah. Okay. So if I... Um, resume this. Ah, it's going the right way. Once it reaches that over there, it should move up a little bit. Let's quickly check over here, because I wasn't sure if it stopped correctly. But I may have just been the piston going rogue. Okay, it's going up. And it stopped. And it's coming back. Nice. Let's see if it repeats this uh, several times. Here we go. Nice. I think it's working. Yeah. I want to monitor that it kind of uh, manages this transition here by itself without any help, because last time I think I did still help. Um, well, while it's doing this, let's uh, figure out how we can detect this here. We need a sensor here. So the idea is that we need to detect when it has docked at the bottom. 
basically when the reset operation is complete. This should give us like a nice kind of cone coming out here. Yeah. So now, as we come down, we will detect... Um, don't play us off. We'll detect a subgrid station, right? Uh, this here down here will be a subgrid station. Uh, and then once this block here merges, or we merge with that block down there, this will no longer be a subgrid. So basically the subgrid will disappear. So meaning the setup action here, this one here, will be um, for triggering the, the reset is complete. Let's go over there and add a timer block for reset complete. Let's trigger the timer block from the sensor. We're getting close here. It's um one more one more completion here. Let's watch this. This should lift up. And it should trigger the sensor. And it should start its cycle to go up on. There we go, we're lifting up. Sensor was triggered. The sensor turned off. However, this wasn't triggered. The wheels are still turning. I want this to trigger at the same time. So, I did change the piston field to go slightly further down. And that might mean that there's slight kind of differences. So I, I think I need to raise this field here slightly up. I'll just do it incrementally. I'll do it to 43. That didn't trigger it. 44. No. 45. Yes. Okay. So hopefully this will now trigger at the same time as this piston on the next iteration. So we'll need to wait until it has completed one lift up again. Hopefully the wheels will turn off and it will extend up. That's what we want. Hmm. Now it was triggered. Interesting. Because it was triggered when it reconnected. I mean, that's fine with me. It's not what I wanted, like, it's not the exact order I wanted it to uh, do this in, but... I mean, as long as it continues on, as long as connecting this up here and pulls it in, that's fine. Okay, so... I think I will let this run and see if it completes a run all the way up. You know what? No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna stop this right now, and we're gonna try a print. So let's, uh... Reset this. Uh, trigger now. Okay, so before... I, I need to replace the skirts here with uh, normal blocks. And I need to attach a, a sensor quickly. So let me quickly do this and then we'll actually try to print like something. Like maybe the cargo ship or something. <laughs>
don't use blast doors unless you're really sure what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Removing these blast doors was more of an effort than I anticipated. But it is done. I need to weld up these here still. But that's uh, a minor quick cleanup. Um. Okay, we need a small grid projector forever. A grinder and pistons. But a grind. Um, small head. Let's load something up. Blueprints. Let's print another cargo ship. Uh, I, I know that we need to flip it over. Like this. This should do it. Okay. And then on start. Going on here. Oh, we're actually building. That looks good. That does look decent. Looking good. Like, not all blocks are fully welded up. But, um, that's okay. That's, like, easily kind of fixable later. Okay, um, this is what came out. A couple things still need to be... Did I run out of metal grid? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I think I may have run out of metal grid, which is the reason why these thrusters are not... Um... And a couple of other things are not completed. Um... But here's the thing. One thing that is uh, that definitely didn't work uh, quite as I wanted 
I, I, I detached it from the projector already, or removed the projector, because um, uh, I had some issues here. The, the engine's on, which is probably... You want to turn them off when taking a blueprint, just because uh, it caused a lot of clang on the printer. Um, as soon as the engines were printed, they turned on. And that seems like not something that's desirable. Um, but that's so on my end. There's also the other thing that I noticed, which may or may not require me to uh, rethink this printer a little bit. So if we come from one direction across this uh, welder wall, and there's any blocks in over here that can't be welded up yet, then they will never get welded up because in, on, the, on the pass back, we might be too low. Um, not necessarily, uh, not always, but there is this possibility. So I think the reason why these thrusters on top here are missing is for that reason. Um, they were... It, I, I'm not sure which direction it came from, but whenever it came from whatever direction it came, it um, decided that it can't place those thrusters. Uh, it's a little bit curious because it was able to do so with these up here, and they're like otherwise basically the same. Like even the blocks surrounding them uh, are virtually the same, but maybe, maybe there's a little bit more this stuff here um, that provides like attachment opportunities which we don't have in the back. Whatever it is, um, this here, this here, uh, this, uh, this block here, or these in front, uh, the same. Like the um, when I was passing by these. Um, I was coming from this direction probably, and this cockpit wasn't here yet, so it couldn't place them until it reached these things here in the back, so I could place these, but then it had already passed this point and couldn't place these blocks in front here anymore. They could attach to these, but it could only place these after it had passed them. So, that may mean um, that we need to do a back and forth um, before we do a raise, which basically means it would double the already kind of slow print time. Um, but if the printer, once the printer is set up correctly and is working, then like it, it, we can just AFK, right? You, you, you throw something and you turn on the print and then you just go and uh, wait for it to finish. You don't need to uh, babysit it or anything. Let me uh, land this one here. Oh, it doesn't have any gyros. <laughs> the gyros didn't get... They were... had the same problem. Also pretty sure you want to have the... landing gear not on auto lock. <laughs> uh, on, a, on a blueprint. Learning lessons here. I just realized something. <laughs> Good thing we never brought this all the way up. I raised this one over there, but I didn't raise the other ones. So I still need to do this. Okay. Let's see what we got done. We added the docks, locks for carriage, charging, and I.O. We added stepping function to Z-axis. Yeah. We added automation blocks, we did. We built the welders multiple times. <laughs> uh, we attached a projector and we printed something. We successfully built a 3D printer. There's some improvements that we can do to it, certainly. Um, but I think overall we did a great job. If we want to have more reliable prints, I think uh, the easiest way to do it is to just uh, increment the Z-axis every other um, back and forth. Uh, that way, we can make sure that we have an opportunity to print stuff in either direction. Um, and it will also help with uh, completing blocks more reliably because I think the couple of blocks were not completed correctly. I know we still have moved the MMR and now that we're starting to use some more cobalt through metal grids in that printer, 
we probably should uh, get that moved over because how much coal do we have left? 815? Running low, running low. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe. I upload Space Engineers videos twice a week and there's lots of other stuff to explore on the channel. And if you know somebody who might enjoy this video too, please make sure to share it with them. It's the best way to help the channel grow. Thanks a lot for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.